you saying, oh God? Yes, the reason the Bitcoin magazine is front and center on my desk is because this is the foundation of all economics and the economy, money. And we need to understand money and Bitcoin's a, a, the best form of, of money out there. So yeah, that's why it's right here. Why are you saying, oh God? It's Bitcoin's not. Oh I didn't God, get Bitcoin to finish is, the uh, book a, in the lounge there on why Bitcoin. So you like how we have a Bitcoin book <laughs> in, the, in the lounge. I didn't know we had a lounge at the front of the Rockstar office. Who cares? Yeah, we have a pool. T- <laughs> we have billiards. We have billiards, some arcades, a bar yeah. and a Bitcoin book in the lounge as you yeah. enter Rockstar. One book. Yeah. yeah. One book. Yeah. It's a beautiful book by Tomer. It's a beautiful, it's, it's, it's like a coffee table type book. It's, did it not grab So I wasn't yours. supposed to actually read it then. Yeah. It, for someone like you, we've tried to dumb down the concepts to a level. <laughs> that you that's exactly what I need. That you could understand Bitcoin. So that's why we put that book. I knew you were coming in this morning. I'm yeah. like, hey, get the kid's version of the Bitcoin explanation. Yeah. Put it out for talk. <laughs> Jeez, why are you dismissing it still? Uh-huh. Please tell me you have some Bitcoin. I do have some. But no, you have it in some ET. I know, right? the wrong way. I know, I know. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Ruben, back to you, because you, you're you taking this very seriously. Bitcoin's this very serious topic, and that's why it's here. That's why. And this is the latest Ruben, edition do you have of Bitcoin? The, of course, yeah. Okay. You, you, of course. I can barely course. hear you speak oh. into, pull this close, just pull the mic closer oh, yeah, to you. it's easier, because I can't move the chair further. Yeah. Can you hear that? No, but you still have <laughs> <laughs> You still haven't moved the mic, dude. Pull the mic. Is it too heavy? You want me to do that for you? Are you moving it a millimeter at a time? Pull it. There you go. Holy smokes. For anyone listening who doesn't know we're friends, they're probably thinking I'm an asshole to you guys. No, they know that. (laughs) (laughs) They're not thinking. (laughs) Oh, shit. Um, But... uh, Todd, you should not have all of your Bitcoin in some weird fund. I know. Listen. No, I do own some outside of no, a No, you just, don't. Just not don't a change lot. your story. You no, don't. You yeah. probably, well, not a lot, which means nothing. You don't have any. <laughs> Listen, get some Bitcoin. I'll help you out with some of the cold storage. Okay. Pull it off the exchange. It's just interesting. Can I just cut you a check and you do it for me? No, I don't want your responsibility of your financial situation. This is how you're going to grow into an adult. Have you heard, have you heard something called insurance? I'm not an adult because he helped me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he helped you, but won't help me. Have, okay. have oh, you heard, thanks, huh? Hey, have you heard? You didn't ask. Yeah, you, uh, I just did. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> you, have you heard of something called insurance, Todd? Yes. So for those of you listening who don't know, Todd sells insurance through Desjardins and he, you're a, um, well, I don't know, your name is in lights when you pull into Cambridge. Yes. So I don't know if you've covered all of Cambridge with your insurance policy yet or not, but it seems like you're pretty close. That's why I'm in Oakville. <laughs> but Bitcoin is insurance. Just look at it like this. Insurance on everything else you own. Okay. Just maybe that's the good way. Do you understand the concept of insurance? Sort of. Okay. So then <laughs> Bitcoin's just insurance on the whole financial system. Can you yeah. look at it that way? No, I can just tell by your yeah, facial still, expression. Yeah. You don't care. I think I need to finish that book in the lounge. Yeah. Ugh. Um, so what's going on with, uh, the latest in the luxury real estate market? What are you seeing out there? Cause I think a couple months ago it was crickets on all markets. And when I say a couple months, I guess I mean a bit longer, November, December last year, even January of this year, let's face it. There was like no activity happening. What are you seeing now as we record this at the beginning of April? Yeah. Well, I think what was driving a lot of that was, um, obviously the confidence in the market. So you had a lot of people who were buying land and starting to build these high end luxury homes uh, where even though they have permits, they've kind of put that on hold. So uh, when the, when the builders are no longer actively building and, uh, and all of a sudden there's going to be less inventory. So we're seeing just as a whole, that kind of cool down. But now like the market across the board, we're starting to see things pick up again. We're seeing lots that would just sit there that were selling below market value or now selling at market value, some of even just above that. Um, And we're now starting to see the builders get a lot of calls, wanting to get re-engaged and start building versus potentially that same buyer who had the intentions of building is now just saying, okay, you know what? I'll just sell the land with the designs, which doesn't always add additional value if you have your own personal designs people who want to build generally want to do their own custom design right so but uh all in all it's i think things are definitely picking up to where they were last year and then i I am i'm curious you basically deal with luxury real estate Mm -hmm. higher end real estate what are you seeing on listings available compared to maybe historic amounts of listings that are available on the market and give me maybe the price category of like, I don't know, 3 million to five or or whatever you kind of focus on. Yeah. So 
I, I think the, that high end market is very similar to what you see with the 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 normal market. So th- there is definitely a very very low inventory, um, and that's why you're seeing lower sales. What, what do you mean by that? Like half of normal? Um, so I would say, yeah, half would be a, 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 a good representation. Um, Every and I, I've, I've shared this with you. So one thing I do is like on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis, I review how many new listings actually came into, and I'll, I'll focus on one particular segment in a, in the neighborhood. Let's say Oakville, for example. And we were seeing like in one week a rolling period, there'd be like and this is very recent, about sixty to seventy new listings, but yet there would be somewhere around forty sales. Right, where in an average market you would see somewhere in the neighborhood 150 new listings, right, and then there would be somewhere around 60, 70 sales. So um, the the fact that we're seeing less sales is a direct correlation with the fact that there's less inventory, but the ratio of what is selling versus what's out there is still higher than than a normal market that we would have seen in years past. Right? Is it what it used to be at the peak of last year? Absolutely not. But it's 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 still a very healthy market. Yeah, got it. And then, uh, Todd, I'm curious, because if that's what's going on in the real estate, which is, you're right, Ruben, it's what we see kind of across all categories, is that listings are down. So sales overall are down, not because of lack of demand, just lack of available product. Mm-hmm. There's not enough real estate for sale out there to really bump the real estate sales. It does feel that there's a squeeze in price about to happen because the demand feels like it's bubbling. Like, it feels like the demand to me is just simmering and their listings are not increasing. So I feel like we're hitting this moment where we might see an unexpected rise in prices, which is really going to screw all the policymakers here in Canada because we already have a housing problem. Prices are already too high. And now we're, we've created a situation where prices might spike higher. I don't know to what percent, mm-hmm. but it seems like the fundamentals are in place for that to happen. Yeah, I, I, at right. Again, you were talking the high end luxury market where there's more activity is going to be that market between. You know, st- well, just call it the starter home category is always the most active and liquid piece of real estate in the country. So, yeah. So if you look at that market, it's going back to where people are um, one deliberately holding offers. So listing under market value to create that bidding war to drive it over market value and then obviously get a sale that is going to be firm. They don't have to deal with conditions. They get to pick their the seller gets to pick their preferred closing. There's a lot of benefits of doing that. But then you also have the the seller who decides to list at market value and they have a really decent home, like the home shows well, it's in a good neighborhood and it's well priced. That house you would expect that would sit on the market for a week or so may sell slightly under asking. That's not happening now. What's happening right now is that house gets listed all of a sudden with the seller's expectation getting somewhere near asking or just under, but they're getting 15, 20 showings uh, booked over the first two, three days, but booked on the very first day. So automatically they're changing their strategy and say, wait a minute, let's say we're going to review if any offers come in, we want a 48 hour irrevocable. So now, now it's not the initial strategy to hold offers, but they're immediately changing that, which is now they're technically doing an offer presentation two days out. And all of a sudden now there's five or six offers coming in. Only in Canada can we raise interest rates to try to cool the economy and cool off inflation to create a situation because our fundamentals are so wrong that it's going to do the direct opposite. (laughs) (laughs) And rates are due. I think the state is going to raise rates again one more time. But um, it looks like over the next year or six months, we're going to have, to me, I think we're going to have lower rates at the end of this year than right now. Which so it'd be crazy because with, with where the rates are right now and the fact that we're seeing houses that should not be going agreed. into bidding wars are going into bidding wars. And uh, you can only imagine what happens if they reduce rates. Well, we're currently building half the amount of houses that we need in this area. We're, we're not building what we need. Mm-hmm. So we just have this demand where people are getting to, sometimes I'm sure families ex, or extended families, if they have maybe adult children are now getting together to buy homes. Mm-hmm. Like that must be mm-hmm. happening where we have more adults in one home pooling resources to buy it. There's just not enough product out there and this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm curious in this economy on insurance, are you seeing anything kind of insightful right now? Like. Um, 
car insurance policies going out the door more or less different or anything that's kind of caught your attention in the last six months? Um, I mean, we're tightly tied to the real estate market. So obviously with, okay. you know, not a lot of home sales going yeah. on that, you know, that's typically prompts people to shop. So, you know, it is slower, um, uh, on our side on the, you know, the car insurance side, just with everybody getting pinched everywhere, or there's the grocery store, Home Depot, you know, a lot more people shopping their insurance, you know, finding ways to, uh, to save, whether that's, you know, calling us or our, our own clients calling us to, you know, try to reduce, you know, uh, somewhere so that they can afford a, you know, a, a Rubens mil- yeah, Rubens home. million dollar homes here. Yeah. So yeah. Trying to save five yeah. bucks so we can all save up to buy one of your beautiful properties there for Tato. Yeah. Listen, what I want to talk to you guys about today. So thanks for the, the, yeah. the, the quick updates on what you guys are both up to. But, uh, Todd, I'm curious, did you, when you quit your corporate job after we started nine to five sucks. <laughs> When we started I think we got dot .com, didn't we? Not oh, no, it was dot .ca. Was it, oh, I think it was a lowly .ca. Uh, okay. Did no, you know that? Yeah. we had, Todd no. and I had the URL 9 to 5. Yeah, we were going to quit our jobs on breakfast television. Yeah. That's when we all work together. What yeah, kind of yeah, friend yeah. are you, dude? I don't remember. This was like a big moment in our yeah, lives. Yeah. For, but now that you say it, yeah, that does sound. Todd, Todd and I were the inside sales Yeah, we had to come in every day. To, so he to, missed to, those to conversations. Ruben, who was our yeah. field sales reps. Meanwhile, Todd and yeah. I were making all the sales, and you were just driving around eating McDonald's or whatever yeah. the heck you were doing. Burger King. Burger King. <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> um, and then we, 9to5sucks.ca, uh, uh, you went off to, we've, we've talked about this in the past, yeah. going off yeah. to start your business. I'm curious, reflecting now, because how long have you started your own insurance? Is it not a practice, insurance agency? Agency, yeah. Insurance agency. How many years has it been now? 15. 15 years. So if you look back on the journey now, yeah. what has it, has it produced what you thought it would produce for you in life? What have you learned? What do you reflect on when you look at this? Oh, wow. Big question. Um, well, because when you started, you probably yeah. thought, hey, I'm going to start this business. Yeah. It's going to be profitable from day one. I'm going to stuff my bank out with some cash. <laughs> and then I'm going to hire some people. Let's face it. Yeah. That's what yeah, it's easy, your, right? It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to start yeah. this business, stuff some money in your yeah. bank account and travel around and, you know, do this awesome life and work, you know, two yeah. days a week. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, none of that really uh, worked out that way. So it's funny. You and I were just uh, just chatting about this. Like it's it's I think really just started to pay off in the last, say, three to four or five years. Um, and it's still a grind. You know, like I don't you know, just this year, I've decided that I'm not working Wednesdays just to purposely slow down. That ended the end of February. I've worked every Wednesday since it's Why? just... Why? You just don't have the discipline to do it? You know, yeah, it's, I think it's partly discipline. It sucks you in and it's, you know, it's a, it's like an extra limb, right? Like it's hard to, to let go. And I'm sure both of you find it the same way. Like you, you just continuously get sucked in. And I, I, I've made the mistake over the years of it becoming such a big part of my life that I guess it's a good thing. I enjoy coming in. Like I actually, mm. I can't sit at home and, and just do nothing. So even those Wednesdays that I was taking off, like it was pretty, well, it's pretty regimented. What, like, what were you trying to do on those Wednesdays? Read, uh, play you know, golf, yeah, read, have lunch. Well, golf is the plan this summer, obviously. Uh, listen to podcasts, you know, uh, uh, sketch and you, you'll laugh and like, so, like, yeah, yeah. like really like this really like yeah as a, as a kid like I probably stopped when what are I was, you sketching just whatever it's just something to calm the mind Mickey Mouse drawing of yeah, Mickey if there's Mouse. a Mickey Mouse in your desk I'll sketch it sure yeah, yeah. Well, I can yeah. see how that could be relaxing it's also yeah. a bit yeah and that's it's also it, a bit funny but yeah, I, I yeah. can see the I, relaxing part to get the because yeah. and, and believe it or not it's a great way at least for me that I don't think about anything except when I'm sketch, like oh, what I'm right. focusing on there, which sketch is, out the Bitcoin logo. Yeah, <laughs> you understand some Bitcoin for. Will that help me? <laughs> yeah, it will. Yeah. Um, so yeah, has it? Yeah, has it been fruitful? Absolutely. But it, you know, it it takes time, and it is, you know, it's still a huge, huge part of my life. So do you think your identity has become hundred percent? Really? Yeah. It's too entwined into. It is, and and I think you know. Uh, you know, I think you and I have talked about this before. Like you've recently bought a place uh, up in Blue Mountain, and you know, I I. The cottage for me is place. That's the only place I can go. Either that or vacation, where I can go and disconnect. You said that you even warned me not to do. Yeah, work. the Wi-Fi and that. Yeah, with COVID, that kind of screwed me too. Where I now have Wi-Fi and I can go up and work. Like my wife can work there all day long. Whereas I, I struggle with that. Like I like the, the separation of the two. Um, but yeah, back to your question. Yeah. It, so how do you pull? So if your identity and your yeah. life is becoming intertwined mm-hmm. in your business, how, how are you going to be able to pull back? Like, what's the strategy here? Booking yourself, do you just have to leave the country? 
Do you have to well, book that's trip? kind of where it's at right now. Like I, I, I almost do. So, I mean, I've made some changes in the business. I've got a great, uh, I call her the VP of making my life easier. I'm sure I've talked about this before where she handles a lot of this stuff within the business now and I can comfortably leave and, and not have to check email and, and feel like I need to check in. Like they, I got a great team. It's, it's more you do me. having recently uh, met your team. Yeah, and, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah they're, they are. And, and it's, it's me. It's not that it, the business can't run without me. It's me feeling I need to be two locations, there. Cambridge and Guelph. Yeah. How big is the team now? Oh, geez. We're, uh, t- is it 12 or 13? Mm. Yeah, I can, I can't. Yeah. It 12. seems like a good group, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting because I don't believe in the concept of retirement. No. But I also don't see you working in your business the way you're working for the rest of your life. So I don't know what you're going to do. Like, is it going to be other hobbies? Yep. But what are those going to be? Yeah, well, I'm still, that's why Wednesdays are, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on that. So, yeah, like I don't see, our, our business is a bit unique where I, I, I don't have a book to sell. So I'll be, you know, likely open till I, till I go. Um, but to me, it's about getting a team in that can manage it for me. And then, yeah, I, I obviously need to do something. I'm mm-hmm. just not 100% sure what that is, whether it's getting more active into real estate or just something that doesn't involve even making any money. Like, you know, mm-hmm. just something to, you know, keep me busy, keep me occupied. It's weird. The modern lifestyle is strange. Like, I remember seeing the villages back in Croatia with my family there as people got older they would hang out in the village and pass on wisdom and they would mm-hmm. participate in different things, in different harvests, in different winemaking, in different, you know, making some prosciuttos and things like this in maybe lesser and lesser quantities of time because they were just older, yeah. but they were passing along wisdom yeah. to the village and they were still participating because everybody was around them in, in, a, in the modern life, the way we live in suburbia and these kind of cities to slow down and retire isn't as enjoyable because your friends aren't around you. Like in the village, they would hang out with their friends because the next village over is a walking distance. Yep. They can hang out and have coffee with all their friends and kind of chill out. I'm thinking now of your father in Portugal, mm-hmm. Ruben. But I feel like the modern life doesn't kind of, it's not conducive to this slow unwinding. It's almost like on off. And yep. I think humans struggle with a quick switch like that. It's not mm-hmm. like you're going to be able to just turn it off. Yeah. Um, I think about that often for, for this business as well. I do feel slightly fortunate that I get to do things like this and we have mm-hmm. this newsletter cause I really enjoy yep. talking about these kinds of things and talking about the central yep. bank and inflation. I think this will be with me for a long time, but it is a, it is a bit of a struggle. Yeah. But what about you? I mean, do you still enjoy coming in, doing what you do? Like mm-hmm. how do you shut off? Or do I don't you? think I, the hobby, for, the hobby for me is really studying the economy. Like I absolutely just love yeah. studying the economy. So I get to do what to me I consider a hobby and then write and talk about it in this business. I'm not on the streets anymore doing deals. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not doing real estate transactions and yeah. I haven't for years. So I could see myself doing this to some capacity for a very long time. Yeah. 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 And I don't, yeah. Like there's certain policies and things within my business. I would have no idea. Mm -hmm. how to even do anymore. I think it's some of the things that I get to talk about, I feel give me a lot of purpose. Mm -hmm. And maybe with the insurance stuff, you need to find that. Maybe that's a little bit of, and and by the way, I'm not saying I have it figured out. I'm not saying it's- No, 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 no. So I have, yeah. I I just mean that's helping me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do- Ruben, we're intentionally keeping you yeah, this out of right. this conversation. No, yeah, no, you yeah. don't worry. You will. Don't worry. To, we'll, I do help questions. a lot of newer, <laughs> newer agents, and I enjoy that. So I, you know, uh, yeah, got it. I'll go out and chat with them or chat with their team, and mm-hmm. and I do a lot of that sales coaching just for kicks. Uh, I enjoy that that piece, and maybe maybe that's something that mm-hmm. I do on the side, whether it's revenue generating or not. Um, but yeah, I just I I have a tough. What time. about buying a farm? No. Uh, maybe. Yeah. No. I, don't, I don't know. I like wine making. I could see wine making. Yeah. Remember what was the yeah. city? <laughs> oh yeah. We said, um, hey, we found some in the office is, the other day. Yeah. The wine, wine professor. Oh, I've got 600 in the basement <laughs> if you need more. <laughs> uh, uh, it, you know oh, God, he made a called? CD called uh, the wine professor. Oh, the yeah, drink yeah, professor. Yeah, the drink professor. And, and it was, uh, oh shit. What Chianti's and Merlot. Oh yeah. It went around the world. It was, uh, it's actually a great yeah. CD. You should uh, give it. Is it great on a scale of one to 10? It's like a solid what? Four. Are we talking Bitcoin? Are we talking? What kind of scale are we talking? Oh, Bitcoin is pretty yeah. much worthless. Yeah. That CD, <laughs> not the Bitcoin. In relation to Bitcoin, your CD is pretty much <laughs> worthless. worthless. Did you listen to it? <laughs> Did you listen to it? I think I bought some. Yeah. I bought some and hand Did them out. And then people started giving them back to me. That's They're like, please don't give me any that's gifts. That's not what I asked. 
Okay, so did you listen to it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. you know what? He started with beer. Mm-hmm. But then he, it was always confusing because he was working in the beer industry. Mm-hmm. And well, then, no. So I had started importing wine. Remember, I was, do, I was yeah, doing yeah. that That's when right. I was at Oracle with a guy I used to work That's with at right. IBM. And then came up with this idea for uh, uh, Drink Professor. I just still can't remember the name of that CD. Um, well, hey, we have some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Hey, I'll give you a part and get this. <laughs> yeah, right. Pop this in. You can't even listen to it. No one has a CD player. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Making, making wine. Nah, no, I'd prefer just drinking it, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. Anyway. What about you, Ruben? You, uh, uh, first off, before you answer any kind of attempt at wisdom here. Because <laughs> you said you're going to give us some wisdom. Um do you find your identity is intertwined with what you do for a living or are you able to kind of just separate out from what you do completely? Um, I, I do think it's intertwined. And I think part of it is where in the past, most people were, you know, thinking of retirement, looking to that as like, mm-hmm. okay, this is when I can start living, living, right. Or just uh, new experiences where I think we're fortunate that, just the way we think we're not waiting to do things just because we think that there's going to be a better time to do it. We do it now. Right. I've always said that every time my wife or my kids ask me, Hey, let's go away. Let's do something. It's always figured, okay, how do we make that happen? Not, Oh, we can't do it right now or can't afford it right now. Um, yeah, you always have been good at that. I got to admit. And then what was really bad and you know this, and when we would travel, early on, I could not disconnect from work. So which would, which would frustrate my friends if we were traveling as a group or it would frustrate my family. Sorry. Uh, I got to pause right here. I once spent 12 hours in a seven 11, one block off the Las Vegas strip because I went on a trip with this guy and we couldn't find an ATM in the hotel. We needed some cash and we walked one block off to a seven 11 to get some ATM and one block off the Las Vegas strip. It's a bit better. It's it's big blocks, (laughs) but it gets sketchy quick. And the way we went was the sketchy way. I don't care. Mm -hmm. We end up in the seven 11. I'm like, okay, Ruben, I got the cash in here. Let's go. He gets a phone call from one of the modern builds that he's doing. And there's a beam. I'll never forget this conversation because I got to stand there for like 12 hours, I feel like, and listen to this conversation. He walked around the inside of this 7-Eleven. I feel like pacing on the phone. phone, And I'm sitting there thinking, we're in Vegas. We're with a bunch of buddies who are waiting for us back to the hotel. And here's Ruben. And I don't want to leave the guy because I don't think he knows how to get back to the hotel. Uh So I will stay. (laughs) I'll stay with the guy. And, uh. And it wasn't 12 hours, obviously, yeah. but it was a long time. Yeah. And that was the whole thing is that when we were travel, couldn't disconnect. I was always like working on. Now you can stuff. though. I can. And that's completely changed. Um, and I think I also do a better job of hiding it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I still do it a little bit, but also we were up. recently in Dominican and I yeah. know you were dealing with some stuff, but you hit it really well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, uh, I'm laughing because I was just telling you about a deal where a client pulled out that client did a deal while we were in Dominican, pulled out of that one and pulled out of this one. So, uh, but either way, uh, I think going back to identity, I don't know if it's identity, but most people find a hobby because it's something they enjoy doing. It it relaxes Mm -hmm. them. Um, whether it's playing an instrument, whether it's, you know, doing artwork for me, one of the things I absolutely love is I think sales is an art form. Like when you're interacting with people, understanding, you know, and how to influence them. So one of the biggest highs that I have, and I hate to admit this, but you are very good at it. Thank you. Thank you. It hurts me. Yeah. So I will say that. So I absolutely love that. Right. It's, it's, It's an art to me. And then the other thing that I love is on the real estate side, it's the tangible thing about on the design side, understanding the construction. So you bring those two things together. I couldn't get more pleasure out of doing something, um, as a hobby. So I don't ever see myself retiring. And that drives my wife crazy, right? Because the idea, she's like, no, I want to, I want to slow down. I want to disconnect. I'm like, we can just do more trips, do more of everything. And I don't need to retire in order to do that. Sure. Right. So, and I don't think you should, because I've seen you in the moment with building with, with people who are building properties and you involved in the design, working with their architect, yeah. uh, picking out lots choosing different finishes in the houses. You absolutely love it. And not only now it sounds like I'm fucking salesperson (laughs) for you, but not only do you love that aspect of it, you are really good at the 
real estate transaction because you are so patient with everyone. Sometimes maybe to your detriment where you're giving away so much of your Mm -hmm. time. But that's interesting, Todd. He does seem to, he seems to be doing something where he just Mm absolutely, not that you're you're not, but I feel like to his bones, he's like, he absolutely loves everything about it. So maybe you just slow down the number you're doing. Exactly. It's slowing down and then picking and choosing. Todd has the team. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just need to build out the team around you. Yep. And I think, and we talked about that and, and that's something that's in process, but I like, again, it, to keep things new, it might be just doing it in different areas, different types of projects. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about doing st- stuff in Europe. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we'll keep it new and fresh. And like we went said, to Portugal together recently for his 50th birthday. Did you know we went to Portugal? Meet no, Ruben, I didn't get Mike, invited. Oh, didn't, yeah, it's, yeah, Dominican. Well, anyone Portugal. who dismisses Bitcoin doesn't get the invite. <laughs> um, the, uh, we went to Portugal. There was an emergency landing on our plane. Oh, that's The right. lady yeah. sitting right behind me mm-hmm. starts, I, they thought her kid, what was it, her um, appendix. Yeah. They thought her, she goes on. So we didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, some lady starts screaming. screaming. She's under the blanket and uh, she's throwing up. Yeah. And uh, they have to, they announce emergency landing on this plane. And luckily we were over the Atlantic, but the Azores, the, yeah. you know, those so Portuguese. Either islands. we were going to fly all the way back. To Canada. To Canada. Oh God. All right. Or we, we happen to be closer just we, by a hair. Yeah. I, think I feel was, like the pilot we, gunned it. We, we, I feel three like three we were slightly yeah, closer think, to Canada. I think so. And then they didn't make the announcement for half an hour and he just gunned yeah. it. I, I swear yeah. I got that impression that like, if you're looking at the map, you're like, wait a second. Cause we were constantly looking Canada. at the map. We're like, okay, yeah, okay, okay. We're going back to yeah. Canada. <laughs> but I feel like the guy, it was Air Portugal. So mm-hmm. I feel like if it was Air Canada, they would have turned around, but it was Air Portugal. So they gunned it and landed it in the Azores and ambulances on the tarmac, like the whole bit. She was at the back of the plane. It was a, they moved her to the back of the plane yeah. but it was a bad situation it was and then your father happened to live wait did he live on the island that we landed on no, no? it was in another island but very close okay. by like a boat ride would probably be an hour but then we went uh we got to go to portugal together we went to the algarve which is their yep. coast yeah. is that how you'd it's say it? Yeah. yeah it was really really nice lagos yeah, and Albufeira. Yeah. um and then we went to lisbon for a little while afterwards mike and i left but you went on you did uh, lisbon first no no second Wow, you Don't really, you really, no, we went to Lisbon, <laughs> Lisbon second. That was the trip on the way back that me and Mike ran into that TV personality, David Rocco. Is that his name? No, you weren't there. Mike was there. Is he like a sh- a chef, like yeah. Italian guy yeah. from yeah. Toronto who yeah. has a TV show and he was bidding on some, uh, there was one, because Mike somehow, do you know on some flights you can bid yeah. on first class if yeah. nobody has it? Yeah. Or I think it's called business class now or whatever yeah. it's called. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but on Air Portugal, it's a live process. So I get to the gate late. Mike already has a business class seat and uh, there's an auction for the last seat and there it's live on the screen behind the ticket booth. So I see competition. Well, that makes it fun. Yeah, I, I'm like, okay, I wasn't planning to do, I think yeah. I had like a pretty good sucked seat. in, yeah. I totally got sucked yeah. into the moment and uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm into this. And, and the lady's like, there's only five minutes left in this. And I couldn't get the app. You know, when, when you're at an airport, the apps won't load and yeah. the Wi-Fi slow. She's like, it's working on my phone. Tell me your name and what you want to bid. So I give her the bid. All of a sudden I'm in first place and uh, some people start looking around and I see this guy kind of looking over here and uh, everyone else rebids. And then I'm like, I'm tied for first or I'm first, second, and then it's over. And then it comes on the screen. It's the most brilliant thing. It says, you have 60 seconds now to put in your final <laughs> bid. <laughs> and I'm like, are you guys, this is amazing. Sounds like the so real I knew, market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, so I was like, screw it. You know what? Now that Mike's up there, I'm just going to win this thing. And it was probably a silly financial decision for me to make. But I, I put in a number where I was convinced that I was going to win. And uh, it up comes the winner's name and my name comes up there. I win the last business class seat. And this guy comes up walking over to me. He's like, is that you? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you know, I oh, I take this flight three or four times. I always do this auction. I always get one of the seats. It's the first time <laughs> someone has ever beat me. He goes back and sits down and the lady next to me is like, you know how that is? He's like, that's David That's Rocco. the guy I beat. <laughs> <laughs> that's David Rocco. So I ended up going and talking to him because my family watches his TV show. They love him. Oh, shit. So I didn't know who it was. So I, I take a picture with him and then uh, I ran into him. And then you let him sit in the seat? No, yeah. he went at the back and then I think I sent some snacks back to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think we had a joke going. I think he was going to send me some M&Ms up to the first uh, up to business class. I was sending him some pretzels back his way or something. Anyway, but that was a great trip. And that was an opportunity to kind of spend some time together. And I think over the last year, you, we've taken multiple trips mm-hmm. together. I know, Todd, you're taking... It seems like travel is... Mm-hmm. 
a way for all of us to pull out of what we're doing on a daily basis and really enjoy time with your family and friends, have some laughs. It is the best way currently for me to disconnect. Yeah. Likewise. I, I, I love yeah. it. Is that why you're going on? Cause you're going to Italy now in May. Is that why you're going? Is this just a, like, we need to pull away from the business? Uh, it's kind of a last, like a uh, Brian will be going to university in the fall. So it's kind of a last Family? Ditch effort family trip that we cool. know we can get. And Ryan's actually in Europe now, so we're actually going to meet him there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sort of what's the your same. Son, what's your son doing in Europe? I don't think Ruben knows. Uh, so yeah, so he traveled with his girlfriend for a couple of weeks, and then he's been working at a hostel the last three and a half weeks in southern Spain. How old is he? He's 18. So he's uh-huh. like the, it's like a work away. They can work 15 hours for free board, I guess. So he's been playing guitar on a rooftop for free room and board. And now he's going to do that in Port in Portugal. Awesome! Some remote village, Vinag. Vi- it sounds like Viagra, but it's Vi- <laughs> Viagra. Staying at somewhere. Yeah. he's staying in Viagra. Vi- Viagra. So he's <laughs> going to be a. He's producing music for with awesome. for three weeks in like a commune or something like that. But yeah. yeah. So you guys are going to meet up with him. Yeah. And how long are you there for when you're in Italy? Uh, eleven days. Cool. Yeah. And you're staying in Italy the whole time yeah. down there? Yeah. Cool. yeah. So, okay, something else yeah. I want to ask uh, for both you guys, because you guys both are very successful at what you're doing. Um, Todd, when you look back, what do you think was, uh, you know, and I can share what I think has been mm-hmm. really helpful in, in some of our, you know, success, limited, so personal, so I don't know, whatever yeah. you want to call the success is like a loaded word to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but what would you think reflecting back on starting your business was really something that helped get momentum, keep mm-hmm. it going. And now in a place where let's like, oh, yeah. okay, like I have a business and I've survived that startup phase. Yeah. So I think it's probably a couple of things. And I'm sure I talked about this last time I was in, but uh, for me, it was, I, I burned all the boats. So there was no turning back for me. Um, you know, moved to a new city, wife didn't have but a why, So how did you feel comfortable burning the boats? Was it because you were joining, at the time it was called State Farm. Yeah. Did you believe yeah. in the process they had to launch a new area that, and that's why you burnt the boats? Because you didn't burn the boats blindly. No, no, yeah. Like I think it was a mix of believing in that. I mean, it was State Farm. I mean, there was obviously some success uh, there, but I think, you know, not to be cocky, but belief, I think, in myself mm-hmm. too. And my wife was on board. Like she's a huge part of the business and she's like, okay, let's let you know, let's do this. So I think number one was that was that, okay, there's no turning back. So, you know, um, you know, knocking on doors. There was the no turning back, but married with a belief in what you were about to do. And I'm, I yeah. only keep bringing yeah. that up because yeah. I see some yeah. people burn the boats, but they have no plan in place. Yeah. So it's strange. And I don't know what that turning point was. Cause I, I remember prior you know, it was all, okay, I got to get rid of this debt. I got to get pay down the mortgage, you know, just taking on debt. Yet when I flipped a switch, moved and opened this up, like the, the you know, debt I, income. <laughs> you know, living off a credit line for years. And it was just like, yeah, whatever. It's going to, like, it was that, that deep belief. Okay. It's going to work out. So I think number one, that, and then to me as well, surrounding myself, I've, I've, you know, over the years, I've been blessed with a great team and building a great team. And I think maybe that's what Okay, but that deep belief that it was going to work out, mm-hmm. where do you think that came from? Because I had a similar deep belief. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like I had attempted, you know, you and I never really did anything with it, but I had attempted, like this I think was, and I think I remember reading somewhere, like it takes like five or six businesses before you actually are successful. And I look back, I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of attempted, you know, I say kind of, because that's what I did. I kind of yeah. attempted five other businesses prior to this one. And, you know, this was number six and it was like, okay, like th- th- this is happening. And then from that point on, there was no, no turning back. And I, you know, Tara believed in me. I believed in myself. I believed in her. And yeah. And, and I, yeah, I was similar. We, I started multiple di- I remember one time I bought VHS tapes and I was forcing Carol to watch these tapes on how uh, tapes on teaching us how to trade commodities. And Carol was, we're in the basement of our parents my parents house so this was really early on because for the first two years after getting married we lived in my dad's house and and and, uh i i remember carol turned to me and said so like what are these things these pork bellies that we're going to trade and i i I was like okay i don't know if this is going to be this (laughs) i don't know this trading where'd you get that from trading places i don't remember that they got a corner of the orange juice market yeah i think i spent a lot of money on these tapes too but uh the the and then um another one was sales in the city where i started this website ruben do you do you know this that was the camera? 
No, the digital camera, that was another one. Yeah. But sales in the city was like the best one because it was salesinthecity.com and I was grouping all the sales that were going on in Toronto and sending them out via email. And my email list was growing exponentially with no marketing. Mm. I was I was in Chatelaine Magazine. I didn't even know, like I didn't ask somebody. Someone's like, hey, Tom, your little business yeah. there is in Chatelaine Magazine. And I closed it down. I was like, oh, you know, I don't like doing this. I thought Carol might like grouping the sales together because I thought this was brilliant. Like get all the sales that are going on in Toronto, put it into a weekly email distribution list. So you could just scan of like, oh, if I needed something, here's where the sales are in that area. Mm. And uh, I shut it down. About five years later, Groupon does the same thing and goes public for a billion dollars <laughs> but you know when you're just not the person like yeah because uh, i had this vision i'm like i'll start it in toronto and then i remember i was thinking chicago for some reason i'm like yeah. then i'll go to chicago i'll start it in chicago then i'll go to new york i'll start it in new york wow. and i'll just kind of roll it around yeah. but to your point you start all these things and you're just not the person who has the ability to to build it but yeah. you do seem to incrementally learn and yeah. grow yeah but I, I guess um Ruben, for you, when you left the software sales world and went into real estate full time, what was that like? What gave you the confidence to do that? Yeah, so my situation was totally different. I wish I could say that I burnt the boats and it was, uh, you know, I took this leap of faith. Um, for me, I was, I don't know why, but I was very kind of always fear driven. I, I didn't want to leave. Uh, you were fear driven. Oh, yeah. I, I don't. Oh, when I was working in software, um, as much as that job was killing me, because it really was, I mean, in the, the, from a health standpoint, I was probably at my worst. Mm -hmm. uh, so physically, mentally. Um, I remember your workout routines. You would go hard for like three months and then nothing, nothing for nine. Yeah. Right? And I had to, there, there, because like otherwise yeah. I would have completely fallen off yeah. the cliff. But Ruben introduced me to Cinnabon. <laughs> Cinnabon. Square one mall. He's like, Tom, let's yeah. go for lunch. lunch. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. after lunch, he's like, hey, yeah. there's these things called Cinnabon. You yeah. should try them. I'm yeah. like, I've never eaten that before in my life. Yeah. I think I did actually, on, just by myself, I was the one that was driving the stocks up in Burger King. Because literally. And McDonald's. <laughs> and I, you knew every sale at McDonald's uh, ever. Yeah. I knew. Yeah. They're right. That's right. There was yeah. like sales on Monday. What is it on Tuesday? Oh, it's uh, McHappy yeah. Day or yeah. whatever it was. But um, for me, I didn't burn the boats. I was trying to figure out a way, how do I manage both to mitigate the risk as much as possible? Uh, and there was a point there that I had like three jobs. I was working a very stressful job, obviously in the corporate world in sales and, and IT. Uh, then I was in the process of building um, you know, a house that was well over my budget. And then I was also doing real estate sales, right? And each each one of those on their own. I remember you building that house. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was praying for you. Yeah. So, um, but how I left software was much different. I was literally pulled in to my manager's office, and he, even though I was performing and I had the top, so you were fired. He basically came <laughs> in. <laughs> so so and I, I, no, no, no. It's important to understand because uh, I've, yeah. I've never really? been fired. I've never been fired. And then, and, and I, there was this fear of always getting fired. And but I wanted it to happen because I wasn't. Are you sure you wanted it to happen? Or is that how you're justifying? No, I did. I wanted it to happen. I'm like, I hope that, I, that and eventually they let me go. They give me a severance, and then it could, could free me from this. But at the at the same time, the money was really good. It's hard, right? It's lucrative so it's hard to let go it, of. it was very lucrative yeah. and i was being able to manage it the whole time but when they did it it were was, you could, really managing it though i was fired i was no i was because here's this is what you need to understand why i got hey, fired don't point I'm your pointing, finger at me because this is so the reason why i got fired had nothing to do with my performance it was strictly that the person that brought me in was let go yeah. Right. So the person that yeah, replaced her, which that. was my new boss, I remember made way less money than I did. Right. And I was like literally almost untouchable to the point where I had this top performing team, everybody, every, things were just moving and they weren't before. So, uh, but this individual found out where I lived. And he and I was only coming into the office two three times a day, working from the office, which two, two three times a week. Sorry, a week. My apologies. And uh, it just it irked him. It bothered him so much uh, that he literally brought me into his office and he questioned. He's like, "I googled you. I see you're doing all this stuff in real estate." And I justified it. I'm like, "Look, I do that on my own personal time the same way people." I forgot about all the manage their like yeah. you know you you probably coach your. He sons. found out one of the builds you were doing. Well, he did no. The build was almost completed. I was already living in the house and he found out where I was living. He's trying to figure out how does this guy live in this house working at this job. 
But either way, then after um, a point in time, he just figured, like, look, I need to get this guy out of here because I don't want to set the expectations with anybody else that works here that they can have a secondary income. I want them to be have that yeah. fear. And so he brought me in and he just said, look, I have that fear. That's a great place to work. Yeah. yeah no, it was. It, it was it was so, it was software, a software yeah. sales. Yeah. Yeah. We all know that. Oh, yeah. 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 That was I mean, it, we all benefited. We did, but oh, it was a. It was. Sure. Let's face it. There was times where it was a horror show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, but either way, so he, he pulls me in, and he just basically says, "Look, I got to let you go." And I ask why. You know what he says? Culturally, you don't fit in. And then that brings me right back to where you guys were talking earlier when you were right when you started that website. Nine to five sucks. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised somebody didn't step up and say, fire you guys right off the bat. <laughs> say culturally, you guys don't fit in because Todd and I were producers. Yeah. So was I. So was I. But for him, what was more important was not that. It was the fact that it was. It was there was. I'm going to say it. There was either some jealousy or there was. And the, the yeah, concern, for sure. Right, but. It was the best thing that ever happened. Did you shit your pants that day, though? I, I did for one reason. It wasn't. I, I was. I was. Um, I was like, man. In the, in, the, in the negative way, I was like, shit. I just got fired. I, like I feel like I failed at something. But I was happy because I wanted it so bad. But what he couldn't have done it at a worse time. I just finished building this house, and I still had the construction mortgage on it, which was really high interest. And I was now in the process of actually qualifying mm-hmm. for a normal conventional mortgage. How am I going to get a mortgage if I'm unemployed? And then I basically came back in the office and I told HR this, hey, you guys, you gave me no warning. You did it. So all of a sudden they gave me a huge severance because they knew I was going to come after and sue because they had no grounds to fire me. So that even made it things a lot easier. And that allowed me then to focus on finishing the house and then selling it. And you know the result that on the sale of the yeah. house, that was like game changer. That launched you. Right? But, uh, look, you know, when you're asking Todd, wh- what would you attribute the success yeah. for me? It's never been, uh, this grand belief. Oh, I'm going to do this. I did like, we took a huge risk in some of the moves that we made early on. Um, but it wasn't this belief that this is going to be the be all end all. It's going to pay. It's going to change my life. It, it, it was the opposite because I would always look at things and I would say, okay, what's our best case scenario, but what's our worst case scenario. And if our worst case scenario was something that I could deal with, then there was no reason why I wouldn't do it. That's funny. That's how I constantly live my whole life. Yeah, and that's made everything so easy for me because it, 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 more most people are always thinking their worst case scenario is far worse than what it really is, mm-hmm. and they take no action. But when you really dummy it down and like, what is worst case? Like, really? But also, I think you're not scared of the worst case. Like, you've had jobs before that have sucked, mm-hmm. and I think you're not scared to get your hand. You're you're you're, you're, you're not scared to get your hands. No, dirty. not at all. And and Todd, I don't. Uh-huh. You are not either. So I think when you plan for the worst case, what you see when you put it on paper doesn't scare you because you're willing to go there if needed. Yeah. So so I know you're saying the worst case isn't that bad, but I also think knowing both of you that if it was to get really bad, you would just roll up your sleeves and get started. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but uh, that's absolutely accurate. But where most people, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to do this. There's an upside of a million dollars. But my worst case is I only make 500. And and their worst case is not good enough for them. Where I'm like, worst case... When you said 500, did you say 500,000? Yeah. Okay, that's the worst case? Yeah. So (laughs) where my worst case is, if I I break even, if I break even... That's still based on what the upside is. I'm willing to do where somebody's like, no, they want like this guarantee that a worst case yeah. scenario, they're making this much. I'm like, there's no guarantee in life. That's what so people are looking for. I just want to make sure that I don't put myself and my family in a, a far worse situation just because I have this idea. Right. Mm-hmm. Like Todd did. <laughs> no, I remember, I remember drawing out a chart to Carol and saying, Hey, our finances are kind of going up like this. And it was a line going up to yeah. the right. And I remember telling her, Hey, look, the finances are going to go down. Mm-hmm. Like, like really down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hopefully it turns if I think, you know, if I have that deep belief in myself, like mm-hmm. you guys have been talking mm-hmm. about, it turns and then surpasses mm-hmm. kind of where we are. And there'll be this like kind of point of intersection, but well, then we'll, we'll exceed it. And not only will we exceed it financially, the freedom that we will have in that moment, the time freedom, because I know, Todd, you're saying you've been pulled into the uh, office, but let's face it, you're going to Italy and it's not that yeah. big of a deal. Yeah, I'm so not. There are. And I think we understand that. Yeah. It's not like you're handcuffed to your desk. No. You have a lot of personal freedom right now. Yeah, I, I think when I when I say that, it's more, you know, like I, I, I used to be a strategic coach, and they talk about these free days where it's 24 hours of 
you know, you're not doing anything work related, you know, you're not even doing like work at home that you wouldn't normally like to do, but you're also not thinking about your business. And that's the part. Tough. Yeah. So it's whether tough. I'm in the office or not, that is, 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 tough. Lit. but you know, like in listening to Ruben and maybe it's okay to be intertwined and, and, and that's okay to think about it if you enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like maybe I don't have to completely disconnect and it's okay on a Sunday at the cottage to be thinking about tomorrow and what's going on this week with the business as long as you i would say right? as long as you're present Ex- with yeah people, and that yeah how many people so, you care about then i think you're not hurting anybody no right? you're good at that kind of stuff do you have a trick at being present no 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 I, <laughs> thanks no. for <laughs> great <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was helpful thank you Robert. i was hoping for something uh, very no, i know well that's there. what everybody struggles <laughs> yeah. with is being present yeah uh, yeah and you know what i think that has helped me over the years is that you deal with so much shit over like todd i'm sure mm-hmm. you have mm-hmm. ruben i know you have um you deal with so much shit and you come out the end or other end of it okay it has helped me become president be, present because before if shit was hitting the fan in some situation in my life i would be so mentally focused on that it would be a weekend that maybe i was away with the family somewhere and I couldn't stop thinking about that thing but so I have so much proof now that you get through things Mm -hmm. and it's not the end of the world it allows me to compartmentalize things that come up and not worry about them whereas in the past if we had a water leak in a rental property it would have consumed me all Mm -hmm. weekend until I could uh, deal with it on Monday perhaps whereas now you can push some of these things and put them into a corner and be present in the moment. And I think that comes with experience. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that you kind of gain and learn with wisdom over time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you can trick yourself into it. Like, I don't know if there's a life hack for being present. I think it just comes with experience and reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You are you, were you, yeah, Yeah, I can Uh, see. So I think where, what has helped a bit, um, and we talked about this is, uh, I go through a meditation practice and during that meditation practice, practice there's like different stages and one of the stages is is uh, being grateful right Mm -hmm. and i think when you're being grateful you start realizing all the things that are important to you right and then throughout the day the way you carry yourself right being compassionate and thinking like when i do i notice that my behavior if i do that practice is much different than if i go like a couple days or weeks and i don't do it right yeah so i think that helps a little bit but i don't i don't know if there's any like solid answer of you know that you can give somebody about how to be present Mm -hmm. you have done you do a really good job of managing things though Ruben I know how much you handle and with the family you always seem to find time to give to the family and Todd I know you do as well so uh, and I'm not sure I I guess that just becomes I'm just trying to figure out why you guys are so good at that and I guess it's because it's just high enough on your priority list like you're valuing family high enough that even though you're busy and get sucked into things you're giving the family the time they need do you think that's why? Like where, Todd, for you, where's that coming from? Um, or no, am I wrong? No, I no. Um, I mean, if my wife were here, she might disagree. No, no. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, and, you know, going back to, you know, 15 years ago, did I have the time to make the time? No, now I have the time and I'm able to do that. But I, I, I probably could have done it more 10 years ago. And just whether it was choosing not to or feeling I couldn't, whereas now I, I, I feel like, can but ultimately why I'm, I'm doing this for my family i'm not doing this mm-hmm. really personally for myself um so that kind of forces me i think to st- I'll, I'll and i think yeah. i struggle with that a little bit and i think early on in this business yeah. i abused the family a little bit because yeah. i said the same thing yeah. like doing this hey, i'm doing this for the family remember that chart i showed you carol i'm doing this so yeah. that we can get up on the chart yes right? yeah and, exactly and, but it doesn't yeah. correlate to a fam uh, like a uh, yeah. like a happy family because the no. value system and other you know with your kids mm-hmm. and your spouse they don't see it the same way. Yeah. And you, I think now I've realized, oh geez, like they're looking th- at life through the lens of their own value system and time together with other members of the family, they view yeah. that as a higher priority than yeah. trying to make this chart work out in the yeah. financial situation, go up to the right. Yeah. D- do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, hundred percent. And, and you know, I'll go back to my wife again. She's very good at pulling the family together. Like I think if it was me in charge, there wouldn't be a family meal every night. Whereas, mm-hmm. To her, that's very, very important and family time and booking the time. And that's the, you know, that's the one thing I do find in, in I don't know if there's any different than anybody other, anyone else's family is that we have to book the time to be together. Otherwise it just never happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially now with the kids getting older. Yeah. As you know, as they get older or, you know, you might all be in the same 
home or but if you don't book that time together it just it doesn't seem to happen so looking back ruben i'm gonna ask you the same question are you you know is has quitting and starting your own business has it been what you have wanted it to be is it producing the life that you have wanted todd uh oh yeah 100 percent um why are you hesitating well uh, it's different Right. I think it's different than what you envision. Right. Like I think because it's harder, you know, when, when you've never been 100 percent in and 100 percent owned a business and it's your baby. Like I, th I, I think what I visualized 15 years ago is different. Like I visualized, ah, this will be this will be easy. The money will just flow. I'll be on vacations all the time. Whereas that's just not the case. Send a couple emails. Like right. Yeah. That, like problems. it's just it's all consuming, but it's good. Like you guys, I really enjoy yeah. what I do. It's just it's a different uh it landed a bit differently than I thought, but not in a bad way. Like yeah. I, you know, it, it keeps me, it keeps me busy. I don't think I could be on a beach 365 days a year. No. Just, yeah. you know, like I need something to do. So yeah, that part of it. Yeah. 100%. It's, it, it has worked out. It's just a much different vision than what I had agreed. What I had seen 15 years ago, much harder, <laughs> worth it, but much harder. Yes. <laughs> Ruben, for you, if you look back, you know, well, again, Todd and I chose to do this. You got fired. So you, didn't, you, didn't have it. <laughs> you were forced. <laughs> you were, but has forced. it been? But no, but you were looking at this. Let's yeah. face it. This was coming your way, whether you wanted it or not. It was almost like the universe just said, because we all around you knew, yeah. like Todd knew, I knew, everyone around you knew you were going to go into real estate just because the passion you have for it. But uh, looking back, has it been what you expected it would be? I'm saying this like you're at the end of a career. You're not. Yeah, yeah. Many great years in front of you. I just mean at this point. Mm -hmm. So I'll sum it up by saying this. I think one of the reasons why I was scared to leave the corporate world is that, remember, I grew up in a family business, right, like you. And I saw the challenges, the, 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 the struggles on the family and everything like that, and then I saw it fail. So when I was in the software business, uh, working for a corporation, there was that kind of sense of security, mm -hmm. but which came with, like again, that fear and, 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 and not being happy. Uh, then when moving into owning my own business and being able to, to grow that and having the, the, you know, your life, your terms, right? Doing things and, and never having to say no to a family vacation because I'm worried that I don't, I can't get the time off. But I'll tell you what has been the most rewarding that I did not expect is it's not the life that it created for me and my family right now. It's, it's the context that my kids have. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know what my kids are doing right now. Mm -hmm. So they're opening up the business. Right. And seeing how they can quickly like with what would take me years, months. Right. To do doing in a matter of days and weeks, being resourceful, solving problems, believing in themselves and then looking at. So and just seeing the growth from them. And I think a lot of that, you know, I attribute to the fact that they got to see they were part of everything that we created, right? So to me, it's that next generation within the family and where they go with it is what to me is even more rewarding that I never even expected, right? So, so what about you? Has it been? Yeah, so 2007, 2008, I thought it was, Looking I thought back. this journey was going to be a lot easier. Like yeah. I didn't expect the first five years. I didn't expect the first three years to not only have no money coming out from the business that for me to keep going into debt, mm -hmm. like, like you said earlier on, I didn't expect to go into debt and more debt and mm -hmm. more debt, but I did have that deep belief that it would turn around. Yeah. And I don't think it was until year five where mm, I had any ec quote unquote extra money coming out that. I could save a little bit of money. Yep. So I think I was five years deep into this yeah. business. So this would be from 2007, eight to 2012, 13, yep. where there was like, I was not getting a quote unquote ahead financially. But then now in the last few years, I can see the compounding effect mm -hmm. and I can see, wow, like, okay, it might actually be overall with time freedom like you're saying we have a great team here like yep. you have a, a great team is a great team here my time freedom has dramatically increased and some of the fruits of holding real estate now for 20 years mm -hmm. and uh, running this business for a while it's all kind of compounding yep. Yep. and I feel like I'm on the path to m maybe having more time freedom and have more freedom than I had initially even expected if yep. that could sound right like yep. I feel like it was way harder at the beginning mm -hmm. But surviving through that is yeah. going to produce even more than I expected yeah. in reward. 
if that makes sense. Yep. But that beginning part was so tough that, I mean, at one point I came to Nick in this business, I think we were probably four years in. I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. Close it down, man. I can't, I can't, I'm breaking. I think I hit burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not taking care of my family. I'm not get producing yeah. what I thought I'd produce. Like yeah. I, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was a moment of weakness that I'm not very proud of, yeah. but, uh, and I think Nick and I have both had that and sure. we've been able to just kind of talk each other out of it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I think you read these books and you have these visions of building businesses and yeah. only real estate portfolios and you're yeah. like, oh, I'll just send off this message to this property manager, take care of that problem. I'll just email the bank for more money and get this. And it's it's just a lot harder. Yeah. But it's a, to me, it's also 100% worth it. I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am today, obviously, I mean, that's cliche, without mm-hmm. going through all this stuff. It's made me a better version of myself. Yeah. You know, it's forced me to figure out a lot of stuff and figure out what my true values are in life. Yeah. You know, and it's forced me to figure out that Bitcoin is something that Todd O'Donnell should own. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Bitcoin, it's permissionless, open source, immutable, yeah, most got scarce that. asset. That was on the first couple most of pages. Most scarce I asset. And yeah. still can't be convinced. You know how people, so the, for those of people who don't know, Todd uh, is in the insurance industry. I think you were just saying, I'm, you're surprised that not everyone figures out the insurance yeah. they need. I'm surprised yeah. you're not figuring out the Bitcoin insurance that you yeah, need. I need Todd, it. tell everyone what you do. So if, if someone's in the Southern Ontario area and needs what, they can go to you for a car insurance, life insurance, what, all forms of insurance. We do it all. Yep. Car, life, health, auto, business. Um, Call the office. Is there a website, office? Uh, yeah, a couple of different numbers. Yeah. So easiest one, insurance, Todd.com. Uh, phone number 519-651-0496. But yeah, I got a great team. So you may not get me, but I got a great team behind Insurance, Todd.com. Yep. And uh, Ruben, luxury real estate. I, I mean, you're doing investment real estate now. You're mm-hmm. doing you're doing all of that stuff. Yeah, we, if, help, we help people with just their normal primary uh, homes, whether it's selling, buying, um, but with a focus on basically buying building and then just selling luxury homes as well too. You help people basically decide if they should do a complete renovation in their existing home or they should take that time and effort and money and buy like a lot and Correct. build. Yeah. And you go through the pros and cons of both. That's what I've seen you do over yeah, the years. Yeah. So we even have, we've even done courses, classes, which was a renovate or relocate class, right? Then, cause a lot of people are thinking- That's like that show, what's that show? Uh, Love it or list it? Love it or list it, yeah. yeah. So we do a renovate or relocate. And um, cause a lot of people, you know, they, they struggle with that, uh, that decision. Do I spend money in my current house or do I sell and do I, or, or, and do I, and do I build from the ground up or do I buy something and then just update it? So we kind of put all the, help them gather all their information so they can make the right decision, what, what makes sense for them. Um, but again, I would say that's about 50% of our business. The other, the other 50% is going to be your typical normal real estate where it's people buying and selling their primary home. And we still bring all the, all that knowledge base. Cause we well, sometimes we're getting their primary home ready for sale and it's whether it's small improvements that we're doing to it uh, in a cost effective manner and then putting it on the market and the sales strategy is uh, uh, unselling it and still trying to get top dollar and working with buyers. So it's all the Anything really related? Todd really had a much more condensed. Yeah, I I wish I knew I had five minutes. Yeah, like if you're going to do a five minute commercial, maybe next time, let us know. We'll Todd and I are both clear our afternoon (laughs) schedules so that we could have the end of the podcast just be a (laughs) thirty minute infomercial. Do you want to play a video of some of the projects that you've done right now? (laughs) (laughs) What's the website? You ensure the how do people Uh, find you? uh, So you go thefortadagroup.com you can go there and we're on socials as well everything from YouTube he got dot .com not dot .ca yeah, yeah. yeah he's big time yeah. <laughs> on, on Instagram what are you at? Uh, the Furtado Group so at the Furtado group. group and the same with the uh, with YouTube as well on Facebook so next time you're back you get way more time wow. okay? you're gonna get thanks way more yeah. <laughs> appreciate this guys alright thanks Tom hey thanks for tuning in you can find every new episode of the Your Life Your Term show on all the major streaming platforms so Spotify iTunes Google Play And if you'd like to get free copies of some of the books that we've put together, like these right here, or some of the reports that we've put together, like these right here, you can find all of those at www.rockstarinnercircle.com. That's www.rockstarinnercircle.com. That's it for now. Until next time, your life, your terms.